sailor. The Navy feels it's important you should get it. They brought it to you over 15,000 miles of mountains and jungles and oceans. That's it, boys. Hey, Dick, look, the picture came. Yes. Well, it looks like it. Now, son, you say you've been worrying about me. I want you to stop it, because you must be very busy where you are and have enough to worry about. Things are just fine on the farm, and I'm getting along all right. I was so proud to hear that you're now a petty officer. We've been business partners for going on eight years, George. I'd sure hate to see it busted up now. But the price they're offering us for the bakery is really awfully good. Of course, everything's booming now. We actually turn people away every day on our donuts and cupcakes. It's just a question of whether you'd rather have the cash now or the business to come home to after the war. Dear Sylvester, I think it was nice of you to write to me. Here at the studio, I told our casting director, Mr. Golden Bob, that you and your friends had chosen me as the girl you would most like to have painted on your turret. And he was pleased, too. He says to me, Honey, your kisser has been on airplanes and tanks and billboards and magazine covers, but this is the first time anybody wanted it on his turret. He said I could have this picture taken special to send to you, which I am herewith doing. I hope you'll pin it on your turret. May this put a bang in your turret. It's hard to believe. Darling, I can't believe it myself, but I actually saw it happen. Joni took four steps. I think she was as surprised as I, because suddenly, when she realized what she was doing, she sat down very hard. She is funny looking, darling, just as you are. But I love her almost as much as I do you. The United States Navy knows that such information is vital to a fighting fleet. Nothing, therefore, except actual battle orders takes a higher priority than mail. It is as important as food or fuel or ammunition. For without news from home, men simply cannot fight. Postal experts have never been faced with a problem as gigantic or complex as wartime mail. America sends more than 100 million letters to her Navy every month, to her sailors, coast guardsmen, marines, and merchant seamen. Gifts from home form mountains of mail in the New York and San Francisco fleet post offices. 13,000 mail specialists and 5,000 Navy post offices dispatch this mail continuously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Somewhere in this building in San Francisco is a room, the exact location of which is top secret. To it every hour come heavily coded reports from the commander in chief of the Pacific Fleet as to the whereabouts and future movements of all warships in the Pacific Theater. By armed officer messenger, this information is dispatched immediately to the fleet post office, where it is again coded and put into the post office records. The new code is then sent up to these mail specialists, whose job it is to sort and dispatch to the seven seas five million pieces of mail daily. To preserve the secrecy of ship movements, even the sailors and waves who actually work the mail know its ultimate destination only by code number. As the mail, say for the USS South Carolina, accumulates in its case, the clerk merely ties it out into a bundle, puts on the code number which contains the secret of its ultimate destination, and sends it to the dispatch section, where it is put into pouches and made ready for shipment out of the country. Shore-based units are grouped together by general geographical areas, and each of these areas is assigned a Navy number. This Navy number, together with the name of the specific unit, must appear on a letter before it can be properly dispatched. <coughs> Honestly, I don't know whether people are indifferent or just plain ignorant. Gosh, you think the Admiral or somebody would have a training film made on how to address letters to say this. Just look at that address. Who ever could write it? Come here, I want you to see this. If you want to know how never to address a letter, this is it. Just read that. Pretty officer, Herbert Slocum. No ship, no Navy number, no rate, no nothing. Well, I'm sorry, Herbert. I know there's no such ship as Nixie. Anybody knows that. That would be a fine name for a ship, Nixie. But we have to put these badly addressed letters someplace, so we put them in this Nixie section. And there's so darn many of them. Why... You come with me. I want to show you something. Just come. I'll probably get put on report for this, but I don't care. I want you to see. Do you think you can see something back there at my desk? You should... Good morning, sir. You should see what we've got in here. Now, just look at this. This is all the Nixie section. These fellows just work and work trying to locate proper addresses for you men. All of this mail is improperly addressed. There isn't one letter here that has the proper address on it. Well, uh, sometimes, of course, they can get it through to you, like this one. See, the person that wrote this at least tried to give us a good address, but apparently she didn't know. Why, there might be 20 or 30 or I don't know how many different activities, all included in that one number. Eventually, we'll get this through to him. But they'll spend an awful lot of time when it gets there looking him up. Then this Herman Stinks will write a letter to the Admiral complaining that his mail has been delayed. Herman Stinks? I wouldn't want to be on board with a name like that. I wouldn't want to be anywhere with a name like that. Let's look at another one. Now, here's one that we're not going to waste any time on at all. Stamp this return to sender. Go ahead, stamp it. Do you know that there are 14,000 Johnsons listed right here in this fleet post office alone? And of these, 1,800 happen to be R. Johnson? Well, what air station, for goodness sake? It has to have a Navy number. Now, if the number had been used, we would probably have gotten this to him in five or six days. Unless he happened to be up in a plane or something. In that case, we'd have to wait until the plane came down. Well, that's the way it goes. Oh, brother. Now, here's one that has just everything wrong with it. J.J. Smith, Fleet Post Office, San Francisco. Well, J.J. Smith's just going to be disappointed in mail call, that's all. You know, we've got 19,000 Smiths listed here, and 2,500 of them are J.J. Smith. Thank you. Now, that means that one out of... Uh-oh. Would you get on with your picture now? I've got to get back to work. I was just explaining to them about our Smith trouble, sir. Would you like to carry on? Excuse me, Captain. As our harassed Navy mailman said, 
just about everything is wrong with this letter to J.J. Smith. I'd like to go over that with you for a minute, because recently, in just one week, at only one of our fleet records offices, 107,000 letters were returned to sender. That represents a lot of disappointed fighting men. It means loneliness, worry, and lowered morale. Now, in the first place, we've got to know to just what sort of a unit this man is attached. If he's on a ship, what ship? Yes, that would do it. Or perhaps he's on an air station somewhere. That's better, but not enough. What's his Navy number? Now, after we know where the man is, we must know his full name. Don't use initials. Is it John James Smith? Write it out. Or is it James John Smith? All right, but there may be 10 James John Smiths on a large ship. Give us Smith's rating to further identify him. Write it out for us. If you men will get the word on complete addresses to your folks back home, we'll get your mail to you just as fast as is humanly possible. Believe me when I say I know what mail means to a fighting man. No form of transportation that would speed the mail is ignored. The Mars, mightiest airplane yet built, is in regular Pacific mail service flying more miles per month than any other airplane in history. Fleets of naval transport planes shuttle continuously to and from Navy post offices scattered throughout the world. Often, however, time and transit bears little relation to distance. Airplanes could carry mail to New Guinea, for instance, in a few days. But once there, the only way to get a letter into a lonely secret marine outpost is by pressing into service any primitive carrier that may be at hand. Ox carts and native canoes may take longer for 25 miles than for 2,500 by airplane. As Atlantic ships and squadrons follow the war into the Pacific, the Navy foresees a possible transportation jam out of San Francisco. Helpful in avoiding this will be increased use of V-mail. 70 pouches of ordinary mail, 3,500 pounds of precious air cargo, could be reduced by the use of V-mail to one pouch weighing only 12 pounds. The Navy has established elaborate machinery for reducing letters to microscopic size and printing them 1,800 to a roll of film. V-mail leaves room for other equally vital cargoes for the theaters of war. Total global war, such as our Navy is fighting, demands complete secrecy as to ship movement and fluidity of plan. This is the most complicated feature in the whole Navy mail system. It is the most frequent cause of delay. Merchant ships, oilers, and armed guard crews in ports halfway around the world often don't know a day in advance what their next port of call is. Movements of warships are even more secret and unpredictable. Recently, the Mars left San Francisco with a cargo which included five sacks of mail for a warship which we shall call the Rhode Island. At Pearl Harbor, the addresses on the sacks of mail were decoded and they were properly transferred to a flying boat headed for the Mariana. The Rhode Island was scheduled there in three days. Excuse me, sir. Yes, this just came, sir. Thank you. Well, I'll be damned. Looks like we're not going to Marianas after all. Looks that way, sir. 
Sky House. This is the captain. Let me have a course for New Guinea. New Guinea? Aye, aye, sir. While the Rhode Island is speeding south under secret orders, her five sacks of mail have arrived in the Marianas and have been transferred to the local fleet post office. What are you going to do, Raymond? Work all night? Yeah, Lieutenant, we got troubles. Yeah? I brought you a little present. Oh, thanks. What's wrong? Well, don't look now, but there's five sacks of mail over there. And I don't, I don't know, know where, where to send, send them. them. Yeah. yeah. Where have I heard that before? Who do they go to? Oh, they're Rhode Island. But they switched orders on her. She's going south instead. South, huh? We have no scheduled runs that way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know how we're going to get them out there. Stop your worrying. We'll get them through somehow. Where's your dispatch? Oh, right here, sir. Any likely prospects in the harbor? Well, I've been checking over the sheep. I don't see anything going south. Doesn't seem to be much in. Well, keep checking everything that comes into the harbor. Meantime, I'll go down to the officer's club and see if I can't find an unsuspecting aviator. Right. And stop worrying. Remember your ulcers. There they are, fellows. Read them and weep. Not again. No, no, Jimmy no, Parks, no. where the hell did you come from? I just dropped by your little island for a quiet game of poker. Just a beginner. Hi, Pat. Fine. You pilots sure get around. Which way are you headed? Going down south. South? Uh -huh. Well. Set them waiting. You wouldn't be headed for New Guinea, would you? Right to it. Why? Feel me in. I know. You've got a little job for me. Hope you're traveling light, Parks. But it's only five sacks, and you can put you can put them. Yeah, I can put them in the head. Yeah. Start again. Jacks are better. Meanwhile, the Rhode Island has made port in a New Guinea harbor to receive instructions. Listen, Mac, I must have gotten some mail. That tomato's nuts about me. I'm telling you, there wasn't any mail here for us. Well, she promised to write every... Wait a minute. How do I know you RFD guys aren't screwing things up? Listen, bub. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night. How the ship will get underway in half an hour. All hands man your special sea details. Two hours after the Rhode Island's departure, her mail arrives in New Guinea. At the fleet post office there, How do you like that dame? What dame, Clancy? Susie Callahan. I knew her in Frisco. I bet she writes to every guy in this island. Well, maybe she's got post-war plans. Maybe she has. Got a batch of mail for you, Lieutenant. Yeah, but it's not for us. Where do you want it, Mac? Put it over here. Well, anybody we know? This is for the Rhode Island. The Rhode Island? Well, she just left here two hours ago. Well, what are we going to do with it? I don't know. Let's find out what's in the harbor. Let me have that sink back dispatch. I don't know how they ever expect us to deliver any mail when they never let us know what battles they're having. Here you are, sir. Let's see. 46 oboe. No. Wait a minute. There's a destroyer that ought to be in the harbor. I think I'll have a talk with the skipper. And so I was wondering, Captain, if I could put them somewhere on board this ship. How do you know where I'm going? I don't. I don't either, sir, but... I have reason to believe that you'll be seeing the ship I'm looking for. Well, mailbags are a hell of a fire hazard. But I suppose the mail has to go through, so put them on board. Thank you, sir. Right. A few hours later, on board the Rhode Island... Con I. Con I reports two destroyers joining on port quarter, sir. Very well. Uh, Mr. Young. Yes, Captain. Execute plan sugar. Aye, aye, sir. Captain. Yes. One of the destroyers just blinkered she has five sacks of mail for us. Mail? No. It's too dangerous to slow down these waters to take it on board. Tell her that she'll have to hold it till we make port. Aye, right, sir. Gosh, I'd sure like to know how Mary and the kids are. So the mail stayed on the destroyer because the Rhode Island had secret orders to proceed at flank speed to Leyte Gulf, where Admiral Kincaid was busy with three or four Japanese armadas.
in the ensuing action, the destroyer took a direct hit, which forced her to retire to the nearest repair base, the name of which is still a secret. Once again, the exigencies of war had delayed the delivery of the Rhode Island's five sacks of mail. Back at the repair base, the battle isn't even over yet. I don't know what the devil to do with it. Yeah, we only knew what their point of retirement was. Well, it's a sense they won't go clear back to the Marianas. Wait a minute. Fuel, let's try it. Give me Cobra. We might just be lucky, you know, for once we've never... Uh, Cobra, this is Cottonmouth. I've got five sacks of mail for 112 X-ray. Got any suggestions? Yeah, it's been chasing them all over the South Pacific. Those poor devils have waited a long time for that mail. Roger. I'll have it over there in 10 minutes. And so, during fueling operations at sea, the Rhode Island's five sacks of mail were finally delivered. They had traveled over half a hemisphere. They had been delayed six weeks. But at last, the ingenious postal officers and clerks scattered throughout the Pacific had gotten the mail through. Gosh. Max's faith in his San Francisco tomato is restored. And once again, he is ready and willing to buckle down to be a fighting man. For in the fleet, there are no words that give a greater lift than Here's your letter, sailor.